Cruz to four and one in league with an impressive road win. Didn't start out well. First half no good. Second half tremendous by the Terrapins. We've been saying Michigan State, Wisconsin in control of the league. The Terps are right there too. They beat Illinois 62-56. For Dan Dockage, Dave Fleming saying so long. Now time to send you out to Wichita State and Illinois State. Two minutes in, we're happy to have you with us tonight here in Normal, Illinois. It's a battle for first place in the Missouri Valley Conference. Wichita State and Illinois State, a pair of 5-0 and teams, along with Mark Adams, Mike Cousins, courtside here, as these two teams, probably the most heated rivalry right now, within the Missouri Valley Conference. And Wichita State, the best road team in the country since 2010, 2011. All they've done is win 82% of their games on the road. Winning 82% on the road. That's just an incredible number for Wichita State, but they're coming into a rabid house tonight. Nearly a packed Redbird Arena here to watch this matchup. Wichita State, Landry Shamit. He does not cough it up much. It helps lead a scoring charge where the Shockers drop in 83 points a game. Yeah, Landry Shamit with 54 assists, only 17 turnovers, and he's only a freshman. He really handles this team well. He passes the ball so well. Highly skilled freshman for Wichita State. And on that deep roster, he's the only player to have started now all 19 games for head coach Greg Marshall. Keep your eye on Paris Lee, number one in white. He's the guy that makes this team go. All the way to the basket. Lefty Lay-in was halfway down for McIntosh, but couldn't get it to fall. I'm, I'm surprised that Mikhail McIntosh didn't go up and dunk that. I mean, he's a good enough athlete as a little bit of help defense probably took him off his stride just a tad. He's a good athlete and a very good finisher. I'm surprised to see him miss that layup. Deshaun Smith runs the point, the transfer from Tallahassee Community College. Shamit looks to the inside. McDuffie curls off the screen and off back iron. Here comes Lee and the Redbirds. Lee into the lane. One bounce. And out of bounds as Clayton went to the rim. But how, guard, how hard is it to guard Paris Lee in the open court? He surveys the entire time. He finds gaps in the defense. And he's elite going left. He can explode going left, which puts a lot of pressure on the defense. He's the Valley leader at just about five assists a game. One quick pass. Three pointer good for Tony Wills. If Tony Wills makes shots, that's a good sign for Illinois State. He's only 28 from behind the arc, 28%. Willis goes off the window for a long two. Now Lee wants three. Offensive rebound. Stick back doesn't go for fame. McDuffie pushes for the Shockers. In the fray for the offensive rebound, he couldn't put it back in. Lee with his eyes perpetually up. The post was open. And no driving opportunity for Clayton. 15 oh. on the shot clock. Splits the defenders. The extra pass to the corner. And the second three falls. Wills does it again. Paris Lee just exploded by two defenders. Quick on quick. Paris Lee number one for Illinois State. McDuffie lost it. Into the hands of Fane. Lee's ahead of the pack to the basket. Oh, what a beautiful reverse layup. Early six-point lead for the Redbirds. And a whistle on the floor. Seven a game as a sophomore. 
11 a game as a junior and now averaging 13 points a game for Dan Muller. Third on the team behind Deontay Hawkins and Mikhail McIntosh. He's got the second most steals of all active players for his career right now as well. He'll end up being the active guy here pretty soon. Number one. He's a defensive menace. That's what he is. As this team yeah. is as well. Both these teams. Both these teams are, are elite defensively, both in the top 10 in defensive field goal percentage. Off the ball foul on David Injai. For Illinois State, his first as he comes in. The seven foot forward from Senegal playing defense against Daryl Willis, who shoots right over the top of him and drains the bucket. Yeah, Daryl Willis can make this team elite because he's six eight. He's got wingspan. He's got really good offensive skill set at that 15 foot and inside level. Great athlete, number 21 for Wichita State, Daryl Willis. And Keyshawn Evans, three in the white, just off the bench as well. The sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Whistled for the travel, so it's Wichita State basketball down by four. I like this lineup for Wichita State. When Shaq Morris, number 24 for Wichita State, comes in, plays the five spot, Willis can play more his natural position, the four, and make him look high-low, just like that. Inside for Morris, a beautiful hook with the right hand. Yeah, he can bull rush you. I mean, he's a guy that can get to the quarterback, you know, he just gets he gets to the rim. 6'8", 265. It's a perpetual double team needed to stop a guy like that. Five outside the paint. Evans drives and kicks. McIntosh unable to finish. Shaq Morris with the block off and the rebound. Frank Camp had a good look from three and went to get it inside for Brown, who had an even better opportunity. And now he'll go to the free throw line. Foul against Illinois State's DJ Clayton. Something to keep an eye on here. The fouls already for the Redbirds, five team fouls. And again, that's a problem, especially when you play against Wichita State because of their depth. Mikhail McIntosh has to stay out of foul trouble. Number 11. He's a great athlete that matches up well with Wichita State. Deontay Hawkins has to stay out of foul trouble. The 6'8 guy from Dayton, Ohio. And, of course, Paris Lee as well. Those are the key three for Illinois State that must avoid foul trouble. Now, Zach Brown, you saw there in our hoops group, grew up a fan of spelling bees. All it needs to spell tonight is F-I-R-S-T. First, <laughs> both these teams 5-0 and oh in the Missouri Valley and trying to gain sole possession of that spot. Well, they've been in first place, I think, since my last child was born. <laughs> and he's 11. Traveling call going back the other way. Now a one-point game. But the last time that Wichita State wasn't in first place in the Valley was the end of the 2012-2013 regular season. A winner-take-all matchup against Creighton, March 2nd, 2013. And then they just rattled off 18 straight wins to start the next year. Doug McDermott went for 41 in that game in Omaha, absolutely dominated. We thought that was the last home game of his collegiate career as a junior, but he came back to play in the Big East the next season as a senior and became the player of the year. A double foul was called on the trip down the floor. Njai his second, and Shaq Morris his first for Wichita State. So that's now 16 fouls against the Redbirds. Against just two for the Shockers. So the shot clock will stay at 16 with the double foul. You know, coaches are always worried about the foul situation when they go on the road. So far, lopsided against the Redbirds. And now an offensive foul is called against Richard Kelly, the junior from Fredericksburg, Virginia, for the Shockers. His first. Yeah, the officials are calling it tight. Listen, in the Missouri Valley, with Greg Marshall and Dan Moeller, again, there's no love lost between these two programs, and the officials know it. Everybody in the building knows it. Everybody in the Valley knows it. And so the officials are going to have a tight rein on this thing throughout this game. Good luck for Hawkins. Yeah, 
Right back to the post. Shockers think they've got an advantage, and with size they do for Morris. It's simple things. That's why I like Landry Shamit. He doesn't try to hit home runs. He hits singles. Passes the ball to the left-hand wing, which gives the angle to get the ball down the post to Shaq Morris. Shaq Morris very engaged early. That's good news for Wichita State. Shockers on a 7-0 run over the last two and a half minutes. Evans driving. Draws the foul with just seven left on the shot clock. And that's on Connor Frank Camp, his first uh, transfer from Kansas. With Keyshawn Evans in the game, number three for Illinois State and Paris Lee, you got two guards, both can attack the rim, both can get by. One's left handed, one's right handed. I really like when Dan Muller goes to this lineup because it gives him tremendous quickness out on the perimeter. And you mentioned the depth as well for Wichita State. How they're going to be able to make it difficult for Illinois State, especially if foul trouble becomes an issue. Ten players on the Shockers roster who get regular playing time, averaging between 13 and 24 yeah. minutes a game. And the way they share the ball, Mike, that's the thing that, that blows me away. Austin Reeves right here, a freshman, number 12, highly skilled passer, another guy with a real high assist to turnover ratio, along with Connor Frankamp, number 33 in black right there. They're going to go inside for Kelly. He lost it off the hand. Lee comes up with the takeaway. Clayton maybe got away with an extra step. And it's off his Nike. Back to the Shockers. Well, Shaq Morris came to play tonight. He's doing it offensively. That time got the deflection off the offensive player's leg defensively. When Shaquille Morris plays well for Wichita State, he changes their psyche. It's like when, when Deshaun Smith plays really well in the perimeter, it changes their psyche. They feel like they're invincible when those guys play well. Reeves gets him through the pressure. Mark, when the ball has been inside for Morris, it's been one dribble right to the basket. How about no dribbles for Frank Cam for three? Those four guys, Shamit, Deshaun Smith, Connor Frank Camp, and Austin Reeves, combined all shoot over 40% as a group. That's dangerous when you got four guys that can do that. And they're all over a two to one assist to turnover ratio. Smart players. Sharp shooters. Hawkins has missed his last couple attempts from three, but it's McIntosh who powers through and gets the end one. Mikhail McIntosh. That's an NBA rebound. No boys allowed here at Normal tonight. Mikhail McIntosh fleet in Illinois State. It was bonkers in Normal that night. And going on the road, there has been nobody better than them over the last many years in college basketball. Yeah, when you're cherry-picking road losses from almost a year ago, you're pretty good on the road. <laughs> Winning 82% on the road. What a job Greg Marshall has done with this program. The first three years were a rough ride, a la Mike Krzyzewski once upon a time at Duke. But since that time, it's been nothing but winning for Greg Marshall in Wichita State. Well, he's only gone to the NCAA tournament 12 of his 18 years as a head coach. Including the 2013 Final Four. So seven straight true road victories for Wichita State. 4-0 and in true road games this year. 15-3 and overall. So the Redbirds at the free throw line. Go back up by one. This Illinois State team is a very experienced team, extremely athletic team that can challenge Wichita State. Remember, Wichita State is still an inexperienced basketball team. They're young as Darrell Willis takes the ball off the slip of the screen. Off to his natural left side, second leading scorer for this team. The transfer from Pearl River Community College in Mississippi. One dribble. Spin and a hoist. Good for Hawkins. But Deontay Hawkins is one of those 6'8 guys, one of the top three for this Illinois State team. Number 23 in white. Keep an eye on him along with McIntosh and Lee. 
They double down the extra pass. Frank Kim. Just good as it gets. Second made three. Just good as it gets. Shaq Morris is doing everything right tonight. That time the assist to Connor Frankham, who's looking like a really confident shooter right now. Coming into play, 34% from three-point range. They're going to go to Hawkins again. There he is. He lost it, tried to tip it out for Lee. It's a backcourt violation for the Redbirds. Now that Daryl Willis matchup, number 21 in black, along with Deontay Hawkins, number 23 in white, that's an interesting matchup right there, as those two guys are very physical down low and trying to get offensive position here, Daryl Willis right there with the slip of the screen, a defensive miscue by Illinois State. Mano Nurser into the game, number 20 in black. Junior big man from Estonia. Now he's got it. Back to the basket with the left hand. No. Offensive rebound back outside for Reeves. He is a prolific scorer in his own right from the state of Arkansas. Frank Kim nearly had it go down a third time. That's a big time rebound. There's some bodies and athletes going after that thing. Lee on the lob and a foul as he sent it up for Fane in his six foot nine frame. Number two on Marcus McDuffie, who takes his seat. The leading scorer for the Shockers is down with 9.45 left in the first. I like what Phil Fain is doing in this game. He's playing his role as a rebounder. Going after the offensive glass, very active. Hawkins again for the block. He's good. He's really good. Averaging 15.7 rebounds. Every time down the floor, ball is into the post on the first look. And a good stop there from Illinois State. Phil Fain building the fence around the basket. Wills outside for Lee. He wants three. I Archer into the hands of Willis. Mark, how does this offense for Wichita State change? when it's not Shamit who's initiating it. You know, what they do well is they really spread the floor well. And with Shamit, with Connor Frankamp and Austin Reeves, look how the ball is able to move offensively. And then it creates gaps that you can expose. Those three guards can make a defense look bad in the rotations. Once they get by you, good luck trying to guard them. And then you see help has to come over. Willis is wide open for the stick back to make it a two-point shocker's advantage. Eight and a half left to go in the first. Swatted away as Nurser comes across the lane. Hawkins tries his hand from three. Saves it on the baseline, but gives it up for Frank Kim. Shamit's going to spot up on the backside. Willis, 17-footer. But Greg Marshall said Willis has been in a little bit of a slump lately. Although most players would probably take 10 points, 6 points, 10 points as their three-game total. Strong more of the basket for Kyle McIntosh. Boy, is he strong. Watch the spacing of the black jerseys. Here's where they're different from a year ago. They run a lot more passing game. They spread the ball. They share the ball. But more of a ball screen offense a year ago. I like what they do this year even better. Nurser, what a sense of where he was on the floor. That's why. They play inside out with multiple bodies. They're really deep inside and outside. Ooh. Now on Willis. Shockers on the roll and a two-point advantage. You know, that sounds appealing to a lot of people, though. Yeah, but I like beer and pretzel. I'm a beer and pretzel guy. I'm in normal Illinois right now. I'm more of a beer and pretzel guy. And know the Valley, your audience, we believe in right? beer and pretzels. No, we don't do audience. wine and cheese in the Valley. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be a beer and cheese type of night in a battle for sole possession of first place. Now Both you're going of these all teams Wisconsin on me. 
5-0. and oh. Here in cheese. You're going all Wisconsin on me now. Okay. Hey, there's nothing wrong. As long as we've got cheese. The right, are we, good. Can we settle on that? <laughs> go, cheese okay. curds in any form <laughs> no you curds. prefer your dairy. Right, you can have curds. <laughs> you have cheese, you can have curds. The Shockers looking to go 6-0. and oh. The Redbirds haven't been there since 2008. They're 5-0 and oh for the first time in the league since the 07-08 season. So certainly much more uncharted water as of late for the Redbirds. DJ Clayton with the drive and the delivery to tie it up at 24. Yeah, he played really well on the win versus Southern Illinois. Went for 13 points carrying that momentum. And now Illinois State goes 2-3 zone, which was really effective against Wichita State in last season's victory here in Normal. Fight for it on the floor. Smith comes up with it. 15 footer, turn around. Morris doesn't get it. The zone worked. And the defensive field goal percentage for Illinois State has been phenomenal. Six in the country, 38%. You go back to mention that win over Southern Illinois on Wednesday, seven point win. They held the Salukis to 19% yeah. on the floor in the second half. Now three on the shot clock. Wills cleared everything. Shot clock violation. The Redbirds turn it over. So you talk about defense on the Illinois State side. Really, really good. Wichita State also a top 10 team in defensive field goal percentage. And these two teams hold their opponents in that 38% range. Both these teams can just be downright nasty defensively. Redbirds sixth in the country. Shockers tenth in the country. Number one in that category happens to be a team with one of the best post defenders in America, UCF. With yeah, seven Taco Fall. Fall. Taco Fall, he's got an eight foot, four inch wingspan. He's seven feet, six inches tall. Taco Fall shooting 83% on the season, which will be the highest field goal percentage in NCAA history ever. Redbirds have a rim defender of their own. Injai playing with two fouls, wipes it away. As Illinois State looks to take the lead. Backdoor feed. Clayton from McIntosh. Here's that zone. Again, this worked so well against Wichita State last season. I knew Dan Muller would go to it. Just a matter of when. High low. Big versus big. Wow. McIntosh came to play in the paint. He picks up his second personal foul, the seventh on the Redbirds. Well, and that is a big foul right now with 450 guy five to go as Mikhail McIntosh rotates from the backside and just rejects it. Boy, is that an athletic play? We got all ball on that. There's your 72 percent of the line. <laughs> Well, now McIntosh will have to sit. Deontay Hawkins comes back in the game. That's a big loss. When you've got three really good players, arguably great players in the, in the Valley, and one of them has to sit for the last 455, that's a big loss for Illinois State here coming down the stretch. Lane violation called against Shaq Morris. Tom O'Neill, the official on the back side of that play near the scorer's table, waved it off. Eagle eye. Watch Shaq Morris there. He steps in. It's a pretty obvious. Sure call. does. <laughs> That's where you just want to dig a hole and hide. Evans starts the show, Clayton on the drive, Hawkins off the bench, and he's got the hot hand. Smart offense. Two go-to guys sit, give it to your third go-to guy, Deontay Hawkins. He's only three for his last 15 from deep, but that one came at a big time. Now a four-point lead. And the foul on the loose ball is against the Shockers. That's on Morris, his second. Yeah, Tony Wills did a really good job of blocking off. And Morris trying to pursue the offensive glass work. 
Wills had position from the time the shot was taken. Watch Tony Wills, number 12. Boy, just really physical. Held his ground. And Morris goes over the back. Greg Marshall wants to be the call to be sliding underneath. I thought Wills had position early. Disbelief for Marshall. That's why you do squats in the weight room. Wills gives up 80 pounds against Morris, and he just had him land on his back. Yeah. But he was blocking off very physically. I understand Greg Marshall's point. I just hate penalizing a guy that physically blocks off and holds his ground when he's doing exactly what he should be doing. You're right. Illinois State now back to man-to-man. -man. They've been in zones about the last five possessions. On those zone possessions, was there something that they wanted to accomplish or just a change of pace? Yeah, they wanted Wichita State to move the ball more east and west and north and south, and they successfully did that. It's a Redbirds 8-1 run. Let's see if they go back to Hawkins here. Now watch number 22 in white. He's their go-to guy. I don't understand why when you got a guy that's going, give him the ball. Keep feeding him. Big dogs like to eat. That's give it to him. That's got to be a huge frustration for coaches, right? Uh, it is for me sitting here. Shamit nearly got pickpocketed. Instead, the foul is on Tony Wills. Breaking their own record from a few years back. First it was 70, and now it's 91. That was the original mark to beat from the UCLA team. What Gina Wariema's team has done is just amazing. And they got off to a 16-0 start today against SMU. So they're just going to keep on rolling. Yeah, Gino Ariema is an elite coach. Will it be male, female, or Martians? The guy would figure out a way to win. <laughs> Landry Shamit coming up empty on the front end of a one and one. After the foul on Illinois State's Tony Wills before the timeout. Dane wanted to find the right spot. His shot doesn't go. Shocker's down five with the ball. Reeves lost it into the hands of Hawkins, now Lee. Well, Wichita State just keeps throwing bodies at you. You to see how, if Illinois State, a lot of experience. You know, typically, you can't wear down experience. Three from the corner is good. He is Sean Evans. He's a little guy. At just under six foot, but he's a huge spark for this Redbird basketball team. Mark, it's now been five minutes since the last made field goal for the Shockers. They've had to go through a 2-3 zone, back to man-to-man. -to -man. That's played straight up under the basket, and two great stops by Hawkins there, knowing how to use his body. At the length of Illinois State, bothering Wichita State in the paint. Drive into the paint. Offensive foul is the call. Clayton has number two. Watch Austin Reeves move his feet and camp on that shoulder. Well, that's really good footwork for the freshman. And I think that's a perfect play that shows the misconception where there's a lot of people who think your feet have to be set in no. order to draw a charge. Not he, true. He established his guarding position and kept his guarding position. Legal guarding position. He moved laterally. He's safe. Baseline try. No for Shemin. Now minute 45 to go. The lead out to eight for the Redbirds. Lee trying to create space against Reeves. And he turns it over to the freshman. Down the floor, just his second shot attempt of the day. He's 0 for 2. But Paris Lee might have made one mistake, but he sure didn't make two. He hustled back and made a great defensive play there. Shamit. Hoist wide right. So the other thing Illinois State's doing their length, it's one and done for Wichita State. When they play angry, it's about getting offensive rebounds and stickbacks. Give a lot of credit to the Redbirds for defensive rebounding here tonight. Lee, corner. 
The Shockers, they come up the floor, turn it over nearly for the ninth time, but they're only shooting 33%. Positioning was too good there for Yeah, Lewis. good luck with that when Daryl Willis gets that deep. That's their first field goal in almost seven minutes of game time. Here a 15 second difference for the Redbirds between the game clock and the shot clock. Nine to shoot. Three pulls the trigger and Keyshawn Evans is good for deep. Boy, he's open a lot. You can bet that'll be adjustment at halftime for Wichita State. Reed steps through. No. Kelly with his third foul going over the back. Has come back to his alma mater and this team, they figured it out at Hawaii. That's when I saw the parts and pieces start coming together for this basketball team. Some of it was injury. Some of it was just finally using their experience to their advantage. Well, it's only about 29 degrees here tonight. Deontay Hawkins was huge in the first half with seven points on three for six from the floor. The player from the Gem City has shined through 20 minutes nice. for the Redbirds. 34% from the field for the Shockers. Not where they'd want to be, but just about on par with what Illinois State has done defensively this season. Sixth in the country in field goal percentage defense as they've started off 13 and 4. Both of these squads 5 and 0 in Missouri Valley Conference play. That's the third. That's the third on McIntosh with that elbow as he cleared out down on the low block. It's a big foul. And the officials, while perhaps not calling the game to the liking of either head coach, have been consistent. The directive from J.D. Collins, who oversees all the officials for the NCAA, says, hey, look, you got to call the first foul. And when it's occurred tonight, it's been called every time in the post. That was a really good example of calling the first foul, because I'll guarantee you there would have been a second one. <laughs> Trump beat McDuffie. Knocks it in. At 6'8", Marcus McDuffie can see over smaller defenders. That time, little Windex. This is a rare matchup in the Valley tonight. It's the fourth time in the last 20 years that two teams that have started off 5-0 and or better in the league have played one another. In those first three, that was also the Valley Championship game matchup. So perhaps a preview of what's to come later this year. Shamit thought he had some extra help down the lane. The attempt left block. McDuffie, second try, awkward walk, but a picture-perfect finish. Now Marcus McDuffie has come out with an agenda here in the second half. Number 32 for Wichita State is making a statement here early in the half. So just five points so far, coming off a team-high 26 on Wednesday against Loyola Chicago. Starting to get a little bit chippy. Don't act like you're surprised, Mark. No, I'm not surprised at all. As Hawkins goes up strong right there, Willis just makes sure that he feels it. And the chippiness started about 10 o'clock this morning here on this floor. <laughs> Yeah, a little miscommunication on what time both practices started. It actually started back during the Kung Fu fighting game when Jackie Carmichael coming down with a rebound and caught one of the Shockers with a foot right in the neck and then all heck broke loose for about the next 42 seconds and somehow Wichita State won that game. Ever since then, this rivalry has escalated. By the way, Jackie Carmichael, one of the great gentlemen, and a heck of a basketball player here, along with those Cyrus Eldridge and that bunch here at Illinois State. I loved watching that team. Tim Jankovic was the head coach back then, now at SMU. Personnel swap for Greg Marshall. Ron O'Nurs, you're in at the forward spot as Morris takes a seat. Here comes another one for Hawkins. Good day, nine of his last ten coming into this game. 77% free throw shooter. 
And he connects there. Uh, Wichita State, the best road team in the country since 2010-2011. They've won 82% of their road games. Facing a five-point deficit here in the second half. 4-0 for the Shockers in true road games this year. And seven straight wins in true road games. It's the second longest streak in the country behind only Kansas, which has rattled off eight straight. I'm sure the Wichita State fans were just really thrilled to hear the Jayhawks have one more road win than them. Well, you can look at it <laughs> as, a, as a glass half it's full. It's factual. Is that if they go into first place, then who do they leapfrog to get there? <laughs> Whoa! McDuffie does it again. Like I said, he has an agenda. He wants to be the best player in the building, and so far he's showing it here in the second half. Well, according to the numbers from Ken Pomeroy, he is the most efficient offensive player in the Missouri Valley Conference, doing what he does, 13 points a night in just 24 minutes a game. Yeah, he's showing us now on that spurt wide. Lee probing. Fight for the loose ball. A couple bodies hit the deck. Shamit goes down. Marcus McDuffie. Shot clock running down. But he can see over smaller defenders. That's the advantage of a 6'8 guy. He and Darrell Willis, both at 6'8, they're like twins in some ways. They have differentiated games. But Marcus McDuffie on the perimeter, you put a guy that's 6'5 and under against him, he's going to jump over you and shoot it. Tough kid from St. Anthony's in New Jersey. And now Illinois State goes back to the zone. We knew they'd go back to it. It worked well in the first half. Let's see if Wichita State can stop going east and west and penetrate it north and south. And perhaps just try and slow down McDuffie, who's got all eight shocker points during the first three minutes of the second half. It's a good call, Mike. When you got a guy like McDuffie, who's a really talented guy, and he gets it going, switch up your defenses to give the offense a different look. Sometimes they forget who the guy that brought him, and they don't get him the basketball. So we saw that happen for a brief stretch in the first half as well. There's your a couple dribbles, turned away by McIntosh. And who was open? Marcus McDuffie. Inside out would have worked well. Not McIntosh, beg your pardon, it was Fain in the post. McIntosh on the bench with three fouls for the Redbirds. Boy, McDuffie's playing hard. McDuffie that time with the SWAT. He's playing his tail off. Fain picks up the first and all. And that's three team fouls against the Redbirds. Up by two. And Marcus McDuffie, number 32, is playing like the baddest dude in the building right now. He's got a size mismatch there over the top of Evans. If he does end up with a good look. Two defenders flash to him when he touches it. Shockers turn it over. And Nurser wasn't ready. Didn't have his hands up. Every player on the bench for Greg Marshall has got to be ready night in and night out. Ten players who average between 13 and 24 minutes a game. I'd look for Deontay Hawkins here. He's the guy that bailed him out in the first half when they got sluggish offensively. Number 23, I'd be looking for him. Just five on the shot clock now off the loose ball. Dane drives and delivers. That's a big basket. You can tell Illinois State was starting to second guess a little bit offensively. Big basket from Phil Fain. What a find for the Redbirds and Dan Muller. Gives a lot of credit to Luke Yaklich, who found Fain last year, was playing at Western Nebraska Community College. In case you're wondering, not a lot of air transport into the western part of the state. <laughs> Three-hour drive from Denver. I so used to drive it from Billings. Try that sometime. You want a player at Western Nebraska Community College? You really got to want to make that you recruiting gotta trip. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fane's been a good pickup. A flight to Denver a couple times. Find him on the and the Iowa State Cyclones. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Jayhawks are now 16 and one, five and zero in the league. Seven point win over Oklahoma State earlier today.
Illinois State with the ball and a two-point lead. All stripped away from McIntosh. Back into the game with three fouls. Three-pointer doesn't go. Clayton, Redbirds have it again. Now Mikhail McIntosh, he really wants it, trying to work down low. No shot. As the foul comes on the floor. How about McIntosh tonight? He's really been taken off his game by the Shockers. 13 minutes, five points. He's got those three fouls, so he's back into the game. But he averages about 29 minutes, 14 points a game. A huge part of what they do. And DJ Clayton gets the basket there. Wichita State sleeping defensively. They gave away those two points. Good execution by Illinois State. It's three fouls on McIntosh, three for McDuffie for the Shockers as well. But he probes. Probes. really probe. Look how he's going into that dead area of the zone. They got to recognize him and give it to him. Mark, you and I were looking at the exact same thing. Frank Camp surprised he was open from 13 feet. It kicks out to Brown, who knocks down the jumper. Well, Zach Brown can be a little bit erratic offensively. When he plays offense well, that's a bonus for Wichita State. McIntosh likes the look and the finish. Yeah, he could play with his back to the basket, he could face up. Really good athlete, Mikhail McIntosh. Let's see if they can get into that valley area of the zone. Coming from the backside, underneath the zone, that's where they've been able to expose it. Look, Frank Kim. Shamit went off the screen and over to Brown. 32% three point shooter. One point game now. He has the same poise that Ron Baker did as a redshirt freshman. Shamit has that same look about him. Evans tried to reciprocate. Offensive rebound for Injai. It was a nine point lead just seven minutes ago for Illinois State at the break. And now they're up 43-42. No surprise. This one will not end up in the 90s at the end of the night. Two top 10 field goal percentage defense teams in the country. McIntosh over the shoulder. I love what Illinois State's doing right now. They're recognizing who their best player is, and they continue to give him the basketball, and that's Mikhail McIntosh for Illinois State. Number 11's getting it done. Brown, he's feeling confident. Greg Marshall has said, hey, look, he's a great defender. Any offense we get from him sometimes is going to be a bonus. That clearly not the shot they were looking for. Now, that's one of those deals where he goes to his coach and says, but coach, I was open. And then the coach There's says, There's a reason why you're open. <laughs> you know, I've heard that one personally before. <laughs> The way I got that said to me was, in high school, I was a teammate of Sean Kilpatrick, now yeah. with the Brooklyn Nets. Oh, I love Sean. Two-on-two two drill, right? I'm, I'm, paired, up, Sean Kilpatrick. I'm paired up with Sean, okay. right? Yeah. The, which is the biggest talent mismatch of the 21st century. <laughs> and I take the shot, whistle blows, drill comes to a stop. Coach says, who do you think we want taking the shot, you or him? Yeah. And I never shot again. No, well, and for good reason. <laughs> Sean Kilpatrick, one of the toughest dudes I've ever seen, and a great young man, played for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Now, of course, having a wonderful career with the Brooklyn Nets. He's one of my favorite guys ever in college basketball, Sean Kilpatrick. Willis goes off the mark. Here comes Lee, the assist leader in the Valley at about five a game. A drive, a dish, nice. and it's two more for D.J. Clayton. And pass Lee with the blind bounce pass inside. Fourth assist of the night for Lee. Lee's starting to extend a little bit defensively. This is where he gets steals at the top of the zone. He anticipates, gets in the passing lanes. Watch number one, ball hawk a little bit. Morris, back Locked. to the outside for Brown, who traveled with it. A year ago, that might not have been a travel called, at least. The officials much more on top of it this season. Paris Lee was named after the French city, and I like hers by five. April 7th, 2015, a date that 
They'll be long remembered here at Illinois State. The loss of seven staff and friends, including associate head coach Tory Ward, whose memory lives on now with the foot gear of Paris Lee. Paris Lee wears Tony Ward's Jordan 10s. Why? Tory's mother gave him permission to come over, Janice Tory, and asked him, Paris, what do you want? I know that my son would want you to have something of his. He chose the Jordans. He wore them over the last year and finally broke them into a point where he wanted to use them in a the game to honor Tory Ward, a tremendous husband, father, friend, community member here in Normal. And now this young man wears his shoes, and since he put them on, the Redbirds are 5-0. and oh. God bless Tory Ward, one of the really fine gentlemen in college basketball, a dear friend of Dan Muller's. A huge loss to the community here at Illinois State. It's wonderful to see a leader like Paris Lee wear the shoes of a leader like Tory Ward. And Coach Muller said, look, you can wear whatever shoes you want. As long as they fit in with the color scheme of the school, yeah. it's all good. And it has been exactly that for Illinois State. They've won six straight, eight and all at home this year. Defending their home court against Wichita State, 47-42. Beautiful feed, one dribbler, Southpaw Jam for three. This zone has been effective. They did it last year for the win. They're doing it again. And Reeves gets turned away. Second try, it's cleaned up by Morris. The defense at the rim tonight by Illinois State has at times bordered on absolutely phenomenal. But on this end is where Wichita State needs to make a stand. We've talked about their ability defensively, but Illinois State getting good shot after good shot after good shot. Clayton is the first player to hit the 10-point mark tonight for the Redbirds. Boy, McIntosh has been really good passing it, scoring it. Watch this. Lee had three defenders on him. Wide open from the corner. Hawkins a triple. Timeout, Wichita State. As Illinois State with a three-pointer from Deontay Hawkins. In second place, they're down six percentage points. That's how good Wichita State has been. You know you're really good when it turns into a party, when all of a sudden Wichita State's down 10 and still has a shot in the second half, but this place was going nuts a few minutes ago. Coming up after this one finishes, we'll head out west to Spokane, the Zags and St. Mary's. Tip off set for 10 Eastern. Talk about stingy defense. Gonzaga, number seven in the country. They hold opponents under 38%. Shemar Karnowski, high efficiency big guy inside. I love him. Foul is on Wichita State's Landry Shamit. That's his first on what has been a frustrating night for Greg Marshall and the Shockers. Now you just saw a rarity. I think Greg Marshall has called about five timeouts the entire season. Credit Illinois State playing really well. They won here last year. They're trying to duplicate it again. February 2nd of 2016. That was the last road loss for Wichita State at the time, ranked number 21 in the country. Great block off by Landry Shamit. Holy cow. That was good stuff. Hawkins, even with the miss. Still the leading scorer tonight for the Redbirds with 11. It's also a game high. Scoring has been well distributed across both teams tonight. How about the running toss for McDuffie? So Shamit fundamentally blocks off on one end, and, land, and Marcus McDuffie gets the opportunity to score on the opposite end. It's amazing what little things do for you to stop a run. He's now got 10. Willis and McDuffie 
Eats with 10 points to lead the Shockers. Lee has looked less for his own shot here in the second half than he did in the first. McIntosh, smooth as he heads back down the floor. That was really good defense. It's just better offense. McDuffie was in perfect position there. That's how good Mikhail McIntosh is. He's become such a better scorer over the course of his career. Went from six points a game as a freshman, now to 14 points a game as a junior. Bucket is good. 7:30 to play in the second. Hawkins whistled for a second foul. So we're gonna now we're gonna start bragging about final four picks, right? I'm just doing it while I have the opportunity. Just uh, let's say the season doesn't play out as I Leonard admire, Hamilton. Hopes. I admire your pick. In 2010, July of 2010, who was the only guy who said that Butler would go to the final four? Since we're bragging, Brad Stevens. N well, <laughs> that guy could be. That could be. <laughs> But he nice, heard it from me, nice but I told try. him. I told him. <laughs> there were two guys. <laughs> Along with the former Division I head coach, Mark Adams, Mike Cousins with you here in Normal, Illinois. Redbirds on the break. And a foul. Nurjur hit the deck underneath. Never got a really definitive signal there. Offensive foul. And the cut, Mac, McIntosh goes up. Nurser clearly outside of the cylinder. He establishes defensive guarding position. That's the right call. And as we got to look at the replays, four fouls on McIntosh. We got to look at the replay there. The baseline official did have the call for the charge. So a good call right away to send it back down the floor. Shockers looking to make it a comeback down seven. McDuffie Hawkins nearly had off. it. Yeah, Hawkins pushed off. Hawkins now has his third foul. And McDuffie has been the hot hand in this second half. Ten points, all of them after the break. Hawkins zipping his mouth shut right there. Now, that's a sign of maturity. Once upon a time, Deontay Hawkins would have responded and probably lost his cool. But he's matured so much, he held his tongue. It's about the next play, not that play. I like that from Deontay Hawkins. All of a sudden, things are tightening up. Tony Wills, foul number two. And now it's the one and one. And we talked about the depth versus potential foul trouble for Illinois State. Mikhail McIntosh with four, DJ Clayton with three, Deontay Hawkins with three. And Dan Muller can reliably go, let's say, eight deep, sometimes nine if he wants to. But it's certainly not the same as the luxury that Greg Marshall has with a true 10-man rotation. And it's not like there are guards. There's a bunch of big dudes. He can spend a lot of fouls across the front line and not lose very much. Two for two on that trip for Shamick. Full court pressure from the Shockers. Remember, Paris Lee owned this segment of the game a year ago. Let's see if he steps up and makes big plays now. Number one white, Paris Lee. He had 19 in that upset win last year. Here are Doug Collins' court. 13 points coming in the second half. Lob just off the mark looking for fame. I go to Darrell Willis inside. I try to go right at Deontay Hawkins to pick up his fourth. There it is. He's got to attack now. He can't back off there. He's got to attack Hawkins. Well, he certainly lowered his odds of making the shot after dribbling from three to 17 feet, but he still drains it, makes it a three-point game, and that will raise the eyebrows on the Redbird bench. Timeout, Dan Muller. You having fun? Soul. 
double possession of first place in the Missouri Valley Conference. The fourth time in the last 20 years that two teams, 5-0 and or better, have squared off. The last three, that's also been the championship game matchup in the Valley. Illinois State has not held first place solely since January of 98. And both these teams have won six in a row. The Redbirds, nine out of their last ten. Wichita State, ten out of their last eleven. Two hot teams in the Valley. Willis and Fain going out underneath the basket. Third foul on Willis for the Shockers. So it's Willis and McDuffie and Kelly, the reserve forward as well, all with three fouls. Lee from three. And he connects his first points since four and a half minutes into the game. He's a gutty little dude. Now let's see if they go to Willis again, matched up with Hawkins down low. Frank Camp, bounce feed, McDuffie, corner try, no. Jack Morris whistled for the foul after the missed three. As he goes down, they get him dragging McIntosh with him. Boy, coming out of the timeout, I am sure that Greg Marshall talked about that Willis Hawkins matchup. They just didn't recognize it and get it to him. A little bit of a different look here now for the Redbirds, taking Lee off the ball. And putting it in the hands of McIntosh. The pitch back for Hawkins. Yes, sir! Frank Camp. Whoa. Can't answer. Wichita State looks a little bit panicked offensively here. See if they settle down. Pull up triple Shamit. And between a bunch of bodies, Willis was going right back up. And Fane struck him on the arm. So Dan Muller calls on Mikhail McIntosh to take the point guard responsibilities. Why? Because you got two bigs defending a ball screen. And they don't communicate. They're not in that situation very much where you got two six eight guys that can play a pick and pop and Deontay Hawkins was wide open The danger there as well is that you've got a couple of great three-point shooters also McIntosh 40% and Hawkins 42% pick your poison in that situation Yeah, Illinois State one of two teams in the country that has their top three scores that average over 43% from three. One of two teams in the country. Two of those guys are Deontay Hawkins and Mikhail McIntosh. We just saw why that's so valuable in the pick and pop circumstance. The other team there, and that's with at least 53 point field goals attempted, is UMBC of the America East. Here comes the press. Willis hits the free throw, 62-55, with 4.33 to go. Broken with ease by the Redbirds. They haven't been to 6-0 in league play since 2008. Lee with the dish, Fain, two tries, jump ball is the call. Nurser got a hand on it, and it stays with Illinois State. So think about the last possession when Shaq Morris was in the game trying to defend the pick and roll, pick and pop. They put Ronald Nurser in for defense. That's why. McIntosh. Oh! 40% from deep. Line it up. Hard to guard. Three defenders come in, jump ball at one end, jump ball at the other. Shockers keep it this time. 
of 2016. They've rattled off seven straight true road games since then. But Illinois State with 14 each from Mikhail McIntosh and Deontay Hawkins looking to stay perfect in the Valley. It's been a week of unbeatens playing each other. Conference USA, Middle Tennessee knocked off Marshall, who were both undefeated. Cincinnati over SMU and the American, both were undefeated. Earlier this week in the SEC, saw Florida go on the road and stay undefeated at Alabama as well. Redbirds with their last nine points coming from beyond the arc, where they've shot four of seven. They were in the second half. Now they give it up. Shamit left his feet, tried to feed it into the logo. Brown. Plenty of time. For this zone, really, really active. Hawkins going to get called for the reach in. That's his fourth. So foul trouble striking at the top of the leaderboard for Illinois State. Hawkins and McIntosh, each with four personals. That's the ninth against the Redbirds. But now you put the ball in the hands of Paris Lee, who's been a really good closer, really, since Hawaii. Last time McIntosh initiated the offense, it was only good things. He lost his footing, and Wills hit as he goes up. Wills, who's been such a versatile player throughout the course of his career, now in his senior season, has played anywhere from the one through the four. When he got here, it was a bit of an undersized squad, and now fitting in well in the role he's taken on this year. Coming back from a double sports hernia surgery about six weeks before the season started, it really didn't hit his offensive groove, Dan Muller said, until finals came around. Boy, they are leaving the door open here. But this zone has been downright stingy. Paris Lee gets the deflection. 12th turnover for the Shockers. And the red clad crowd Sensing the upset victory could happen for a second year in a row at Redbird Arena. Boy, they are just feeding McIntosh every chance they get. Double teamed and to the deck. Free throw line is next for the Canadian product. Boy, he's so herky-jerky. When he gets the ball down in that 14, 15-foot area and goes to work, he's constantly selling a head fake, a ball fake, a pivot. Tell Joe Frazier in his game. You know what kind of duck and move. Now he's got 15. And that's pretty much where he's been over the last few games in Valley play. The last four averaging 18 points a night. He's already gone off this year against Indiana State a week ago. Had 31 against the Sycamores. Now two minutes to go. This is as large as the advantage has been all night for the Redbirds. They're smelling it normal. Travel. Great defense. Not good defense. Great defense. Well, this would be a huge win for Dan Muller and Illinois State. This is a veteran basketball team that could feed off of this confidence. They have solid leadership in Paris League. 
We've got two 6'8 guys that can play him, Mikhail McIntosh and Deontay Hawkins. Those three can beat a lot of people anywhere. Lee dribbled it off his foot. Hit by Frank Kemp. 19 fouls against the Shockers. Now free throw is coming for Lee. Paris Lee, the senior from here in Illinois, is a guy who has the utmost trust of his head coach, Dan Muller. Both ends of the floor to get the job done. And now the opportunity to help be their closer. His father, Clarence Lee, passed away when he was 12 years old. He passed away in his sleep. He learned respect from his biological father. Anthony Franklin came into his life as a stepdad. He's a truck driver and taught him discipline. Well, dad up in heaven and stepdad on earth, you ought to be pretty doggone proud of Paris Lee tonight and throughout his career here at Illinois State. McDuffie. Nerger gets it back outside in a fresh 30 seconds. They want to score a lot quicker than that, and they do, as Shaman hits from deep. Now full court pressure, and Frank Camp wanted the traveling call. Instead, he picks up the foul, which makes it two free throws for the Redbirds. Wichita State has really gone cold here down the stretch. Oh, for six from the floor in the last six minutes. Big Monday, Notre Dame, or North Carolina, hosting Syracuse in the Dean Dome, 7 Eastern, and then at 9, it's off to Ames, the Big 12, number 2, Kansas, and Iowa State. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app, and watch ESPN, a potential for Kansas in that game to be in the number one spot. Tough week for Baylor. Yeah, I'll turn out number one, and then you gotta go play West Virginia. Who didn't predict that? I, mean, I knew Baylor wouldn't be number one for very long going to West Virginia. Good luck with that deal. They are nuts in that place. Frank here. Air balls are three. I don't know about that shot. Well, credit Illinois State. That zone has been downright nasty tonight. They went to it last year in one, and Dan Muller went to the well again, and the zone has been very effective for Illinois State. Foul along the boundary, fourth on Frank Camp, and we talked a lot about winning streaks in this league, a lot of them pertaining to Wichita State. But how about the way that the Redbirds have defended their home court? A win here would be 15 straight home victories for Illinois State. Last home loss for Illinois State, January 15th of last year against Evansville. You know, as an observer of the Valley, and downright I'll say it, I'm a fan of the Valley. And I've been waiting and watching this Illinois State team to mature. I've been waiting for Deontay Hawkins to realize that maybe he made a mistake or two, but could bounce back from it. And tonight is the culmination of that maturity of this basketball team. Shamit back-to-back three-pointers. 11-point game with a minute to go. He is fun to watch. What a career he's going to have and is having. Just a redshirt freshman, a native of Kansas City. The Shockers stop the clock with 49 seconds. Well, you almost feel like when you're in the Valley, when you play Wichita State, you're playing with house money. Because they win so much in conference play. They win so much on the road that even when you're playing at home, you feel like you're playing on the road in a way that you're playing with house money. A great opportunity to get a win that a lot of other programs may not get against Wichita State. But this is a significant win for Illinois State. Two undefeated teams come in. One will be a fun game as well. So there's three teams, I think Loyola, Missouri State, along with Southern Illinois that are hanging in there right now. 
You know, 25 percent of the returning scoring in the Valley comes from the senior class for Southern Illinois. So perhaps other teams around the league watching the results here tonight in normal, feeling a little bit more hope than in years past. Clayton, the foul, his fourth. And if you haven't seen the Barry Hinson interview post game after the Illinois State game about Paris Lee's hair, you have to go see it. Trust me. <laughs> Search it. Go see it. Can we get a teaser? That is good hair right there, man. You, you're known for the green tie. Can we expect any green uh, accents in your hair coming up at any point? I'll do anything for ratings. <laughs> <laughs> a St. Patrick's Day special with, with green know, stripes yeah. in your hair? Yeah. I'd go green. I'm not guaranteeing it. Yeah, I'm never know. But the door is open. Yeah, I mean, anybody that wears an orange tuxedo in Wichita <laughs> for New Year's Eve, you know, I'll go green hair. It's no problem. What was the biggest difference maker tonight? Was it one player or was it the zone defense? Well, I think the Kyle McIntosh in the second half was really good in his mid-range game. Deontay Hawkins was really good in mid- and long-range game in the first half. And that leader, Paris Lee, who, by the way, gets counsel. Point. And a chance to dribble off the clock. For the first time in 19 years and one week, the Illinois State Redbirds sit alone in first place.